I want to quickly talk you through the flip-flop and how we use it as a monostable multi-vibrator or usually just called a one-shot. <clears throat> right, so in our circuit we have, uh, most of you will have some kind of a comparator and this comparator will check a sine wave against a threshold, V thresh. And this will then generate very short or very long pulses depending on a few things. So the pulse length here depends very much on what you set the threshold to, so that duration there for example, and then it could also depend on um, the height of the sine wave. So let's say the sine wave has a bit of a drift, then this will cause a long pulse, this will cause a short pulse. And we want to check that those pulses are all at least 150 milliseconds long. So instead of this input that we're given, we want to generate a pulsed output that looks like this. Where this duration here is fixed to at least 150 milliseconds. So let's call that T high. T high is 100 milliseconds. Then we have different beat rates that we need to consider. So the beat rate, the beats per minute, can go from uh, 50 beats per minute up to 150 beats per minute, beats per minute. And this equates to more or less 0 0.8 hertz to 2.5 hertz and that means that t let's call it from here to this point let's call it t beat if you want the duration between beats or the period of the beat uh, is 1.2 seconds is the worst long case and then 0 0.4 seconds or 400 milliseconds um, that is the fastest that it can be so immediately you can see that these things are going to compete against one another we only have 400 milliseconds to play with from here to here and then we know at least 150 needs to be uh, equal to or at least 150 needs to be the high part so you will see we're going to fix this as part of our design we have to make some choices but let's now quickly consider this. So, I told you, the only thing that you have to do this, obviously if you don't want to use it, if you don't need to use it, don't need to use it, but the one thing that you can use to do, do this is to use a D flip-flop. And the D flip-flop works using a trigger from a clock and it uses a voltage D input. So it's the D input that is latched through to Q which remembers the value when there's a clock trigger. That's just the basic operation. And then the D flip-flop in Altispice also has a clear. In some cases, um, this is a, a negative clear, so this is a, a not clear. But in the D flip-flop on, 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 on Altispice, that's a positive clear. So we don't want to use it as a flip-flop, we want to use it as something else. And just considering the operation of this, um, the clock is the only thing that, that triggers operation, if you want, um, to, to latch something through from D to Q. But then also the clear triggers an operation uh, that forces that to zero. So it's almost as if... It's almost as if the clock is latching through whatever's on D, latching it through to Q, and clear is latching a zero through to Q, regardless of what was on Q, and regardless of what was on D. So this is normally used for synchronous changing, and this is for asynchronous changing, but that's not what we're going to do now. Um, so if we wanted to make bits 0 or 1 here, we wanted to make value 0 or 1, this we can use to force the zero, but we still need to be able to make ones. So what I propose we do is we just connect this to one, and we're going to have to trigger that generation of ones through clock, because that's the only thing that we can have, or that allows us to take stuff from D onto Q. So we're going to connect comparator out, 
this thing here we're going to connect to clock so whenever this has a nice little short pulse it will latch through the one onto q q will become one and then we still have to figure a way to figure out a way to make this go to zero again so we know it has to take 150 milliseconds the one easy way to enforce a time restriction something with which we easily work in terms of delays and, and durations is an RC circuit. So you want to create a clear here and you want it to trigger the clear after a few time periods. So the easy way to do that is just to say let's use an RC circuit and this point here is the one that will cause the clear. So when this goes to 5 volts when this goes to 5 volts, current will flow here, the capacitor will charge, and as you know, a capacitor has a, a charging exponential curve like this, and a discharging exponential curve like this, and then this will charge, it will go up, go up, go up, go up, and then at some point, this threshold of this clear will be reached, and then it will start, it will force a zero here, so this will change to zero, and then current will flow this direction and this whole thing will discharge, discharge, discharge using this curve here. So um, we have a resistor value here, a capacitor value here. And then this is going to reset depending on what this threshold for the clear is. So we have to figure out how all of that works. But the basic fundamental operation is what I've just described. Right, um, so let's consider the full circuitry then. If you look at the sequence of how things happen, at time zero, nothing is charged. Everything is discharged, so this is at zero. Then, when a heartbeat comes through, this capacitor will start to charge. As I just said, when it reaches a certain point, it'll say, all right, I've reached this clearing threshold here, and then it'll start to discharge. So obviously, this was going towards five volts. It was working its way up to five volts, but it got interrupted. And so I'm gonna call this V high. That's where it stops because of the clearing. It would have gone on to five volts, so that's our what I'll call V0 for now. Let's call that actually let's yeah, let's call it V0. That's at 5 volts. And then from this point on it will start to discharge. So as it then discharges according to the new according to the curve of the, the tau, the RC value, it'll discharge and it'll discharge up to a point where the next pulse comes in. So when that next pulse comes in, this will start to pick up again to work its way towards 5 volts. Obviously, same thing happens. It catches onto that triggering threshold, that reset threshold, and then it stops. So it would have gone on to 5. It does not. And then it starts to just charge again. So this whole thing repeats. And as I said, this is the point where the pulse comes in. And this is the point where the pulse comes in again. over here. So now I'm going to do something funny and I'll try to explain why. Um, we want to figure out what the values of R and C are and in order to do so I'm just going to say let's let's use this middle point here. I have a point here down to which it will charge. I'm just going to call that V low. Now this V low very much depends on what the beat rate is. So if, if you're sat with a very slow heart rate, 150, then it will discharge further before it gets its next charge. But I'm going to work with this worst case scenario and I'll try to explain why. I want to ensure 
that I have at least 150 milliseconds here. In order to do that, I have to get this thing to discharge as far as possible so that the charging still gives me 150. All right, so I'm just gonna say this again. I want to ensure that in the worst case scenario, this thing is able to discharge sufficiently that the charge time, the time that it takes from whatever this low point is till there, the time that it takes to do that is at least 150 milliseconds. Now that's gonna be challenged in the case where the full beat is only 0.4 seconds because our discharge time here is only gonna be 250 milliseconds if we choose 150 exactly. Okay, so this V-low is the V-low specifically for a beat rate of um, 2.5 hertz or if you want 150 beats per minute or if you write it in terms of a time, it's for 400 milliseconds um, full beat cycle. All right, so just keep that in mind for a second. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to give this time here a name, and that's also just to simplify the calculations a bit. So this is where it goes through that V low on its way to V high, and it should be obvious, even though my drawing sucks a bit, you can see that this duration here and this duration here is the same. That's just the charging from V low up to V high, charging from V low up to V high, charging from V low up to V high. And those durations there, sorry, those durations there and there and there, they're all the same. Right, so let's just give some names to these then. Um, the name here I'm going to give it is T1. I'm only going to use T1 so that I can calculate the RC values. I'm not going to use T1 um, during the, the oscillatory period here. That doesn't, doesn't include T1. But T1 is the time that it takes to charge from 0 volts up to this the low, almost like a virtual voltage level, um, which applies when 400 millisecond beats happen. Then I have T high, and uh, that's, I should even just redraw that. Then I say, all right, the time period between here and here is obviously T high, and the time period from here to here is T low, and in this instance, the thing that I'm working with, this here is the full beat cycle, and that is T beat or 0 0.4 uh, seconds or 400 milliseconds. All right, hopefully you're still all on top of this. 400 milliseconds. Okay, so now I need to figure out what's going on with my, my um, design values. So the first thing to note is this charging curve here and the discharging curve here we have math for so we can we can write that down so v the charging is described by v at time t from an initial point is equal to v naught which is the asymptotic value or where it's going towards 1 minus e to the minus t over tau and try to keep in mind tau is equal to rc so Tau is determined by our resistor and our capacitor values. And to charge all the way from here to here, V0, which is the, the, the objective or the final value, 5 volts, 1 minus E to the minus, and then the time that it takes to get to that is equal to T1 plus TH over tau. So that describes this duration here. Then I can also write down the time I can also write down the time that it takes to charge from this point here to this V low point of mine using the same math. So V low is equal to 5 1 minus e to the minus t1. 
over tau. Right, so that describes my charging two formulas. I'll make this formula one and formula two. Then I also have a discharging formula. So the discharging is how long it takes to discharge there. So keep in mind, I said the total needs to be 400 milliseconds, but the discharging is described by V at times T is equal to V naught, so that's the, the initial state, times E to the minus time over tau. And if I write that down for this part of the circuit, remember this V naught is not, it's not this one here, it's actually where it starts to charge, discharge from. So the VL is equal to its initial state, VH, times E to the minus T, and in this case, it's TL over tau. So now we have a third formula. We also have a formula that says TH plus TL is equal to 400 milliseconds. This is for our worst case condition. So we actually have a fourth formula. So if I just count the number of unknowns, um, this is an unknown, this we can choose, this is an unknown, this is an unknown, and this one is unknown, and we have four formulas, so one, two, three, four values, or four unknowns, and we have four formulas, so we can calculate it. I also just want to explain something else. Um, if, you, if you use this method, you don't want to choose 150 milliseconds here. Because you want to be careful, you want to be sure that you reach 150 milliseconds, you probably want to make that 180 or 200, just to give yourself some margin, in case some of the capacitors or the resistors are slightly off. So what I would recommend you do, if you can do this, is choose this to be 200 milliseconds which means that T low is also 200 milliseconds, which essentially take this, takes this formula away, and it means that you can um, pretty easily calculate the rest of it. So hopefully that, that helps you a bit um, to try to calculate as you calculate R and C. And um, sorry, I, I, I kind of uh, cheated a bit. I said this is one formula, this is actually two. So for the R and C, you choose one R and then you calculate C or you choose a C and then you calculate the R.